Good evening, prayer warriors. Again. Good evening, prayer warriors. Welcome to our second meeting of our prayer conference. Yes, indeed. It's so beautiful to see you around. I know you will be blessed tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, may we have a special request. All of those who are seated at the back, may we request you to please move forward because we want to see your faces. I'm sure the speakers, the participants would like to see your responsive faces tonight. I know everyone is excited to know what and how you will be blessed tonight. But please, those who are standing at the back, please move forward now. There is a familiar, familiar promise of the Lord found in Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which, we, which you know not. The object of this prayer conference is one of this, that we will learn how to call upon the Lord for great blessings, for His power from the Holy Spirit, for transformation in our character. And I hope we will get that tonight. Once again, everyone, welcome to our prayer conference. For our first song, let's sing, Love Lifted Me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, Blessed presence, leave ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. of the sea below his will obey he your savior wants to be be saved today love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me At 
this point in time, we'll be teaching you our theme song for this prayer conference, a very wonderful promise from the Lord which is found in Isaiah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So we'll be singing it first and then we'll be asking you to join us in the second, second time. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you unexpected end. Okay, so basically that's the whole song. We're just going to repeat the first part. And then for the second time that we'll be repeating the first part, we'll change key and then we'll repeat the same part. So this time, we'll invite you to sing with us the first portion of that song. Only. Sing with us. For my thoughts are not your thoughts.
Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you for you are our Redeemer. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe throughout the day, despite the rainy weather. Lord, we would like to thank you also for inspiring us and leading us to be here tonight in your house of worship to praise you and to learn more about you. Lord, as we start our program, we ask that you send the Holy Spirit to empower us, especially our worship leaders, so that everything that they will say and do will be in accordance to your will. Lord, may we understand how blessed we are to have the privilege of praying to you. Thank you for answering our prayers always. Please forgive us for all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening, PIC. I will read again the verse in Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So my task tonight is to introduce you the speakers um, you know what when you pray to the Lord not with your own word but with God's word this is exactly the prayer that I was praying to God two years ago and our speaker that will be speaking for the message tonight he is David Ng he's from Malaysia and I met him through a faith trip where I don't have anything, but I was praying to, to the Lord, Lord, if you want me to go to AOI as prayer warriors, bring me there, even though I don't have anything. And the Lord provided, and his way is higher than my ways, and his thought is higher than my thoughts. Then that's how I met, I met him in AOI. And I never thought, thought that he will be our speaker for, for tonight. And the other one, the one that will be sharing testimony, she is Alexa Tahud. I praise the Lord when I claim again this verse just one month ago. The Lord convict me to, to chat with her. I was sharing uh, uh, a thought and then she liked it. And I, I read an article about her. She topped the dental board exam just recently. And the Lord said, oh, you need to speak with her. So I chat with her. And it's just so amazing that she was telling to me that I am an answered prayer to her. But she is also the answered prayer to me. So um, friends, you know, we serve a limitless God. So every time you pray, never pray with your own word. Claims God's word because his thoughts is not your thoughts and his plans is not your plans and his way is not your ways. So may God bless you. Before I start my testimony, uh, I want to thank Yona for, as, for inviting me here. Actually, this is just my first time to give and to share my testimony. Um, actually, she said, if I could give inspiration or messages of motivation to all of you. But then, when I came here, I was the one who was blessed with her stories and with her faith. To be honest, I know that most of you are greater in faith than me. But I always pray to the Lord that through this board exam, I will grow further in, in His work. So can I ask for a simple prayer with you guys? Thank you. 
Dear Heavenly Father, please put your words in my mouth. Humble me, Lord, and may everything I say will give glory to your name. This I pray in the loving name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So to start my testimony, um, it all started with Amico seminar way back in dentistry years, maybe two years ago. I attended a seminar of Randy Skeet, and he was talking about educational excellence. And at that time, I know that I was, I was really giving my best in my academics, in everything that I do in school, but I was always having this heavy feeling of uh, burden, burdened with, burdened with all this uh, requirements, especially in dentistry, if there are dentistry students here, it's really hard to do all our work. So in that seminar, Randy Skit inspired me and he told me that in all fields of, of study, we can find the fingerprints of God. We just have to search deeper. He also told that any educational attainment should draw us closer to God. So at that point, I changed how I look at academics. I wanted to do my best for the Lord. When I, when I did that, everything changed. It was not just a burden for me. It became a blessing. I started enjoying everything that I was doing and I was excelling. So at that point, I was praying always to be an inspiration to other people, to be a help to all my classmates because I was not studying and I was not studying in a institution where I have Adventist friends. I think in my batch, I was just the only one of our faith. So it was a really, it was a great struggle for me to uphold our faith. They were, they were always questioning, why are we going? Why am I not doing my clinics on Saturdays? Why am I, why, why am I not eating this or that? But through it all, God always placed his words in my mouth and I was ready to testify that our faith is always based on the Bible, right? And they are always asking me, how do you do it? How do you finish your clinics on time without half of your, half of your required time for clinics? And then I just say, just leave it to the Lord. He will provide. If you put him first, he will really provide everything that you need. In, in connection with our uh, title of this prayer conference, which is Limitless, uh, do not put limit on the power of God. Although we are humans, although we cannot see what God can do for us, always think that He can provide anything that you want if it is His will, if it is for His glory. So, moving on to the boards. Oh, moving on to the graduation day. Uh, one month before our graduation, the dean called called us to our office, uh, her office, and said, uh, three of us qualified for Latin awards. And I was shocked because I knew I didn't qualify na for that quota grade. But I don't know how, but God, man God managed to do impossible things. If only we could Pray for it. I was always praying for it. Eh. Um, and then for the board for the boards naman. 
Um, you know, all of us know that any, any course is difficult, right? But I was always pressured to do what, to do best in everything, eh? But not, but not pressured in a bad way because I, I really wanted to show other people that our God is the, is the real God. Uh, you know naman that people pray to idols to pass the words and you know, I think you know that na. But me, they always ask, uh, how do you do it? How do you study for the boards? Especially now when I pass na. They always uh, ask, how do you do it? And then I always say to them, uh, the key is to surrender everything to the Lord. When you surrender everything to the Lord, kasi, you are emptying and you are emptying yourselves of any of any uh, responsibilities. You just give everything to Him, and you are welcome welcome for His power to change you. So, humble yourselves, and I pray if anyone here is taking the boards this December, uh, start emptying yourselves na po. Uh, when you empty yourselves for the Lord, it will become the time when He will enter in your lives and change how you do things. Um, the words is not just, uh, you cannot do it with yourself. You cannot do it for other people. You can't do it for your parents. Um, do it for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. I always prayed, starting when I, even if I didn't understand anything I was reading, I always prayed to the Lord. Um, Lord, if it is your will that I top the board exams, even if I cannot understand anything, if you are willing to use me, even if I'm not that uh, faithful, Lord, change me, change me and use me for your glory. And every time I open my reviewers, I always say, Lord, please just a little bit of the wisdom that you shared to all your disciples, Lord. That's what I need. Please give me heavenly wisdom, Lord. Um, to those who will take the boards, do not think that you are alone in this, in your preparation. He is always there with you. There will come a time that you will think na you can't do it anymore, but you can because you have strength from the Lord. When you pray, pray limitless, just as what our prayer conference is about. Aim for the best that you can think of because our God is a great God. He can provide if it is His will, He can provide anything that you want. Um, now, maybe you are thinking, ang galing naman niya. But no, uh, everything that I have now is all from the Lord. Please do not look at me as, as someone who's great because Anyone here can do what I did because we share, we share the same God. He won't, he won't withhold anything from you if only you will just pray endlessly, if only you will just pray limitless. And for, I just want to say before I end my testimony, I am always welcome if any of you or any of my dentistry friends here, um, I can always help you with, uh, with the board. So you can always approach me or you can always chat me on Facebook like that. Um, I know this experience is not just a coincidence or I know it will not just end with this testimony. I know there is a greater purpose. So I pray to God, I pray to God uh, repeatedly that He will continually use me and 
He will continually make me grow in faith. And I also want to thank every one of you for being a part of this experience in my life. I'm, all, I'm so blessed, and that's all. Thank you. Good evening. So it's our prayer time now. Um, we will have first uh, an opening prayer, and you will be given after this five minutes to talk with the Lord. You can talk uh, by two or by three, or even individually if you want to. And after this, there will be a closing prayer, and my brother will um, do a closing. There will be a closing song, sorry, and my brother will uh, do a closing prayer. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things on earth will grow strange.
our gracious and compassionate Heavenly Father. Lord, tonight we know that our presence here is not by accident or because you have brought us here, Father, in a special way. So this moment, dear Lord, help us to pray unceasingly and to pray with the Holy Spirit, not in our own words, but through your Holy Spirit speaking in our heart. We would like to submit ourselves to you, Father, especially this prayer conference with the theme, Limitless. As you have put eternity in our hearts, help us, Father, not to be contented with these worldly things that can offer us, but to search for the eternal God that could fulfill everything and fill our heart, Father. In a special way, we pray also for the speaker. Possess him with your Holy Spirit, dear God, that he may speak, you may speak through him and you alone be magnified. Just like Elijah. At this moment, we could only ask for the double portion of the Holy Spirit, none other else. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayer and for preparing our hearts for the message tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. First John 4, 18 says, We love Him because He first loved us. Some say life is just a series of decisions. We make choices, we live and learn. Now I'm standing at a I must choose which way to turn Down that one road lies all the world can offer All its power, its wealth and fame Down the other is just a man with nail scars in his hands yet there is mercy in his eye and there is power in his name I choose Jesus I choose Jesus without a solitary doubt I choose Jesus not for miracles but for loving me Not for Bethlehem But for Calvary Not for a day Not for eternity I choose Jesus Oh my life I sail the sea Reason. I was captain of my soul. There was no need for a savior. I could live life on my own. Then I heard them speak the language of compassion. 
words of healing for broken lives. When they nailed him to a tree, his love included me. Now he's called me to follow and to leave the past behind. I chose Jesus. I choose Jesus without a solitary doubt. I choose Jesus. Not for miracles, but for loving me. Not for Bethlehem, but for Calvary. Not for a day, but for eternity, I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus without a solitary doubt. I choose Jesus, not for miracles, but for love. Not for Bethlehem, but for Calvary. Not for a day, but for eternity. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. Amen. Good evening. It's, I'm glad to see so many people here this evening. My name is David, uh, David Ong. And uh, as Ariona uh, shared with you before, I come from Malaysia, but I'm actually an Australian by birth. And um, I'm really glad to be here with you guys this evening. It's okay, it's a Mac. <laughs> I'm glad to be with you guys this evening and uh, for the next few evenings as well as Sabbath. I bring greetings from Malaysia. I'm part of a church called Damansara Adventist Home Center. And um, over the next couple of days, I will be sharing a little bit more of my testimony with you. Um, I have spent the last 15 years in campus ministry. Um, I was involved in a church in Australia called Gateway Adventist Center. And uh, we uh, planted three churches around the universities in Australia. And uh, I have a real passion for university, young people, and uh, bringing God's word into campus. Um, I was also involved in campus ministries in the US as well. Um, and currently our church back in Malaysia. Okay, I'm pushing my luck here. Is there another platform I can put this on, I guess? Well, I'll just hold it for now. But um, uh, in, in Malaysia right now, we are involved in four campus ministries um, with our church, and uh, we're trying to bring the Adventist presence into uh, four universities there. And uh, I'll share with you a little bit more about that work. Um, but uh, nevertheless, I'm really glad that I can be with here with you guys tonight to share with you the Word of God. 
Before we begin, um, I just want to ask that you bow your heads once more as I kneel and uh, we seek the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we do not have wisdom of our own to be able to seek your word. We do not have wisdom or capabilities or experiences that could comprehend your word. And Father, we ask humbly that you please teach us, give us your spirit, hide me behind the cross once again. And Father, I pray that every individual here this evening will receive a personal message from your throne room of grace. That you would speak to each individual heart that none would come and leave without a conviction from your spirit. And I pray, Father, that uh, you would fill this room, this hall, that there would be no place for the devil to do his work. Please, Father, have mercy upon us and speak to us. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of my message this evening is uh, Dry Bones, and uh, we're going to be going to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. So turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. The Bible says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Ezekiel is taken away in vision by the Lord, and he's shown this valley of dry bones representing the children of Israel. The condition of the children of Israel as God saw them was a valley of dry bones. And I wonder this evening as we come together, so many of us sitting in our seats listening to the Word of God, listening, singing songs, listening to testimonies, does God see a valley of dry bones? As He looks into our hearts, as He examines us as only God can, does He see a valley of dry bones? Brothers and sisters, I dare say He does, because if He didn't, Jesus would be back. Amen? Jesus' second coming would be upon us if we were not a valley of dry bones, because at the end of this passage, this valley of dry bones is transformed into something living. And so, the conclusion that I come to is that every church in the Adventist church today is a valley of dry bones. We are starving. We are so dry, and we need a remedy. And so Ezekiel is brought into this vision, and he's shown this valley of dry bones. And I wonder to myself, what is the solution for a valley of dry bones? Would you be wondering that as well? Do you want to know the solution for a valley of dry bones? Yes or no? Yes, we do. Because I pray and hope that each one of you at least has some little hope that Jesus is coming soon. Amen? And I pray that it is not another decade, it is not another 20 years, another 50 years. You know, I just want to share a little bit of a story. My, my daughter, she's five years old. About a month ago, she said to me, Daddy, you're getting old. And I said, yes, I know that. And she said, Daddy, you can't grow old and leave me alone. 
You can't grow old and die and leave me alone by myself. You've got to stay young. And um, it touched my heart. And I said to my daughter, well, the only way that can happen is if you pray that Jesus comes really soon before daddy dies. And she thought about it for a moment. Um, her, she's very sensitive and uh, her, her eyes kind of um, teared up a little. And then she said to me, Daddy, we got to pray. Let's pray right now. And she prayed right there and then, and she said, Jesus, you have to come back before my daddy dies. And for the first time in my life, you know, I've said it before, and I, I, I sort of meant it, but for the first time in my life, really, I really started to think, Jesus, you have to come soon for my daughter's sake, for my family's sake. I do not want to leave my daughter alone. Um, and and um, it touched my heart. And I'm telling you this because many of us don't really have that experience where we really want to have Jesus come back in our lifetime. Many of us say it. We pay lip service, but we don't believe it, and we don't really want it if you ask yourself honestly, right? And thus, as Jesus, as the Father looks upon his church today, he sees this valley of dry bones. Let's continue on and read Ezekiel 37, verse 4 to 7. And we see some of the remedy. The Bible says, Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and ye will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So here's the remedy. The remedy for a valley of dry bones is what? The remedy for a valley of dry bones to come alive again is more active song service. Yes or no? Yes or no? Is that the remedy for a valley of dry bones? The remedy for a valley of dry bones is let's have more active outreach. Is that the, is that the remedy? Yes or no? I don't hear any answers. Yes or no? The remedy for a valley of dry bones is let's get out there and sell books. Yes or no? The remedy for a valley of dry bones is let's have a really active Pathfinder club. Yes or no? You see, the remedy is really simple. What's the remedy? Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. You know, I travel around and I, I do visit other churches, not as much as my brother or other evangelists, but um, I do visit other churches in different countries. And no matter where I go, because I'm there to share about church growth, I'm there to share about campus ministry or care groups, or small groups, and how to set these up, um, no matter where I go, it amazes me that churches want to do everything but study the Word of God. Everywhere I go, it's the same thing. The pastor will come to me and he will say, David, should we do, what do you think? Should we do more, um, you know, should we do more, uh, I know we don't have small groups, should we implement small groups? Or they'll say to me, David, um, you know, we, we need to get out there. We need to do more outreach. We need to be more seeker-friendly. It's a very uh, to a term that floats around a lot, right? We need to convert our services to be more seeker-friendly. David, I think maybe Pathfinders is the solution. Everywhere I go, every church wants to do everything except hear the word of the Lord. And so we go about, we get really busy, we do everything, and we prioritize hearing the word of the Lord last. Let me give you a story, an analogy. 
I was, vis I was visiting, a, visiting a church, I won't tell you where. Um, it's a church that I, I visit quite often. And uh, when we go on holidays, and um, I preach there sometimes. And I observed as I went to church over the number of years that I visit regularly there, when we go on holidays there, um, that they generally would start Sabbath school late. I don't know if that's an experience that you have here. I hope not. They would normally start Sabbath school. Well, Sabbath school is supposed to start at 9.30. Most people get there at 10, a few. And then the rest of them get there at 10.15. And because everyone gets there at 10.15, they want to make sure they prioritize the most important thing in Sabbath school at the time that everyone's going to be there, right? Right? So what do you think is the most important thing that you should do during Sabbath school when everyone's around? What is it? Any thoughts? They did the most important thing, which was mission story. So they would put Sabbath school Bible study right at 9.30 when nobody's around. And they would make mission story at 10, 15 when everybody's around. Brothers and sisters, as much as I love mission story, we will not be saved by mission story. Prioritize the word. And this is for the leaders here as well. Prioritize the word. If you have nothing else you can do in your life, you have no other time in your life, and you only have a little bit of it left in church, when you get here at 10, 15, prioritize the word. Hear the word. This church would then go on into a divine service, and they would then um, do three or four special music because that church loved to sing. And I know Filipinos, you guys love to sing as well, Right? So they would do three or four special musics during divine service, and they would leave 20 minutes for the preaching. Prioritize the word. Why are we a valley of dry bones, brothers and sisters? Individually and corporately, the devil has deceived us into thinking that we can do pathfinders into heaven. Pathfinders will save us. The devil has deceived us into thinking that we can do tremendous choirs and choirs sing, we can sing our way to heaven, singing will save us. We have been deceived into thinking that, that um, mission story, a great feel-good story that we film with spectacular photography and videography is going to save us. And we put last the priority of studying the Word. A little bit more about that in a moment, but let's carry on because time is against us. Why, why was it so? I want to show you some examples of the, the turning points in history for our Christian church um, and for the Adventist church. The most momentous events in history started off with people studying the word. We don't have a lot of time to go into this, but if you read Matthew, uh, Luke 24, verse 13 to 35, we have the road to Emmaus. The road to Emmaus is right after Jesus is crucified, and um, two of his disciples are so depressed, they're leaving Jerusalem, and, and their greatest hope has just, has just passed away on the cross. And as they're going back to Jerusalem, Jesus appears next to them, and uh, he starts to speak with them. And before he leaves, he takes them from Genesis all the way to Malachi and shows them all the prophecies of himself. And then the revival begins. Revival begins with the study of God's Word. Let me show you some quotations. The Protestant Reformation. What happened in the Protestant Reformation? I'm just going to read the yellow parts to you up there. It's talking about Martin Luther. It says, but with all his efforts, his burdened soul found no relief. As a monk, he tried everything. He was the most loyal of monks. He would, he would whip himself. He would do tons of penance. He would do anything to get the guilt of sin from his heart, but nothing worked. And let's look at another quotation, great controversy. It says, God raised up a friend and helper for him. 
the pious Stopitz, Stopitz opened the word of God to Luther's mind and bade him look away from himself and cease the contemplation of infinite punishment for the violation of God's law and look to Jesus, his sin-pardoning Savior. After many a struggle with long-cherished errors, he was enabled to grasp the truth and peace came to his troubled soul. In another quote, it says, Luther was ordained a priest and was called from the cloister to a professorship in the University of Wittenberg. Here, he applied himself to the study of the scriptures in the original tongues, and he began to lecture upon the Bible. And it is here in Wittenberg that Martin Luther began the Protestant Reformation. It begins with a deep and earnest desire to study God's Word. Amen? Amen. What about the Advent movement? How was it started? Who was the pioneer? William Miller. It says here in Great Controversy as well, I was constrained to admit that the scriptures must be a revelation from God. They became my delight, and in Jesus I found a friend. The Bible now became my chief study, and I can truly say I searched it with great delight. I found everything revealed that my heart could desire and a remedy for every disease of the soul, I lost all taste for other reading and applied my heart to get wisdom from God. Brothers and sisters, when we individually search God with all of our hearts, with all of our desires, all other reading, we lose desire for that. If you are still struggling with fiction stories, movies, music, all of that, perhaps you're not studying the Word of God as it should. Perhaps you come to church and you expect to be spoon-fed and hopefully you will get some second-hand knowledge from somebody else, but you refuse to study the Word of God for yourself. Because when you study the Word of God, as William Miller studied the Word of God, amazing things happen. You lose your taste for the world, amen? And you have this great and burning desire to do something amazing in this world for the Lord. It starts with the study of God's Word. It says here in the highlighted part, he determined to study the Scriptures for himself and ascertain if every apparent contradiction could not be harmonized. Again, it says he pursued his study in a regular and methodical manner, beginning with Genesis and reading verse by verse, he proceeded no faster than the meaning of the several passages so unfolded as to leave him free from all embarrassment. William Miller studied verse by verse. Every part of the Bible, he started in Genesis, he went all the way to the book of Daniel, and then he was so fascinated with the book of Daniel, he spent the next 10 years studying the book of Daniel. Amazing, amazing pioneers, people who wanted to study the Word in its simplicity. Why? Why did they want to study the Word of God? Why were they so, why did they have this intense desire to reach for the Word of God? Well, they had to combat in the apostles' time, the Pharisees, the misunderstandings in the Pharisees and Jewish traditions. In Martin Luther's time, he had to deal with the Catholic traditions. In the Adventist time, in the Advent time, we had to deal with the misunderstanding of the second coming and the investigative judgment. What about in our time today? What are the traditions and, and um, holy grails of the Adventist church that we embrace so tightly that we prioritize second the Word of God? What are the activities and, and um, routines in your church life do you place above the Word of God, studying the Word of God? Is it choir practice? Is it pathfinders? Is it leading out in children's ministry? All of these are important and very good stuff. But if you put it above the Word of God, you have completely missed the point. We become a valley of dry bones. That's the danger that we're facing today. I'm going to skip this part here. Um, we're going to come back to Ezekiel 37, verse 8 to 10. Let's come back to Ezekiel 37 and verse 8 to 10. The Bible says, And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So as this lifeless bodies heard the word of God, 
They started to have muscle. They started to have skin. But there was no breath in them. Why? Why was there no breath? In verse 9, it says, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Verse 10, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came in unto them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. What was the missing component? It's not enough just to have the Word of God in our lives. It is the most important part. We need to study that first to lay the foundation, but that's not enough. Because if you just study the Word of God, you're still a lifeless being without the breath. So what is breath? What is the breath of God, brothers and sisters? What is another word for breath in the Bible? The Spirit of God. Thank you. The Spirit of God. And so the Spirit of God was breathed into this lifeless body and it became alive. As the Spirit of God was breathed into this lifeless body that started to hear the Word of God, it became an exceeding great army. If we want to become an army of youth, if we want to finish the work of God in this generation, we need to have the Spirit of God. Amen? It's not enough for us to just study the Word of God. We need to have the Spirit of God. But what does it mean to breathe? Is it only just the Spirit of God? Let me show you a quotation from Messages to Young People. It says, prayer is the breath of the soul. It is the secret of spiritual power. No other means of grace can be substituted and the health of the soul preserved. It is a wonderful thing that we can pray effectually that unworthy, erring mortals possess the power of offering their requests to God. Feeble, sinful man has the privilege of speaking to his maker. We may utter words that reach the throne of the monarch of the universe. Here is the secret to turning lifeless bodies into an exceeding great army of youth to finish the work in one generation. Prayer is the breath of the soul. Could it be that although we're studying the Word of God, or maybe we're not even studying the Word of God, and that's step number one for us, but for those of us who are studying the Word of God, could it be that we are not breathing? That our church is not breathing as it should, and so we are choked by the cares of this life. We are choked by the busyness of life. We are choked by the riches of this life, and we are not breathing. We're suffocating as a church. Because if the Spirit was poured out, we would be an exceeding great army, and we would have finished the work in our generation. And I can tell you, from my generation to yours, we have failed. And I pray that in your generation, as you guys are studying, that you will be the generation that finishes this work. But we got to learn to pray. Listen to another quotation. It says, do not neglect secret prayer, for it is the soul of religion. With earnest, fervent prayer, plead for purity of soul. Plead as earnestly, as eagerly as you would for your mortal life were it at stake Remain before God until unutterable longings are begotten within you for salvation and the sweet evidence is obtained of pardon sin. I know as a school you might be praying. I just heard um, that you guys get up every morning at 5 a.m. to pray. Is that right? And that in the evenings at 7 p.m. you guys pray. Um, I really praise the Lord for that. Because we're going to study more into the habit of prayer and the importance of that for the last days, tomorrow night. Um, but one thought I want to leave you with this evening. No matter what you're doing, no matter what we are doing as a church today, we are not studying the Bible as we should. And we are not praying as we should. Because if we did those two things, we would get completely different results. If we were doing it properly, we would get completely different results. 
God would be bringing thousands into this church from all around the neighborhood. You would be seeing baptisms like there is like at Pentecost. We are not seeing that and therefore we are not studying the word of God as we should. We are not praying as we should. And I want to challenge each one of us tonight. If you have been taking Bible study and prayer lightly, I want to make an appeal to you tonight. It's a simple appeal, but before I get into that, I want to share with you a little bit of a testimony about our church. Um, three years ago, um, the church board of our church all kind of left, and a new church board came into our church at Damansara Adventist Hope Center. And my brother, who's the pastor of our church, he came from Taiwan to pastor our church. And uh, we had just moved into a new church building. Half the church had left. There had been some issues, which I won't go into. Um, but a lot of our church had left. And we had 30 people. And as my brother came in and as he looked at the condition of our church, I'm sure he saw a valley of dry bones. And uh, he said to our church leadership, all of us knew, he said, we need to do two things. We need to study the Word of God. We need to prioritize studying the Word of God. And we need to pray. And so for the next one year, we stopped all sort of outreach stuff. We stopped all sort of community service stuff. We stopped all of that so that we could revive ourselves through the Word of God. And we made it our priority. Sabbath school, we would study the Word of God. Sabbath, divine service, we would preach the Word of God. We would simplify our service so that we gave first place to hearing the Word of God. Sabbath afternoon, we would stay back and we would study the Word of God. We would study Daniel. We would study Revelation. We would study Sanctuary. We would study um, the, the deep topics of the Word of God that we as Adventists need to understand for our own identity. And then every Tuesday, we started prayer meeting. At first, it was just the church board meeting to pray. But then after that, um, we started inviting the rest of the church and slowly, and because in, in KL, in Kuala Lumpur, um, everyone uh, is dispersed in our church, we did our prayer meetings online. And so we, we did a Google Hangout, for those who know what that is. We would all dial in through internet uh, and we would do our prayer meeting online and slowly it grew from five people to 10 people to 20 people to an average of 30 people. Um, and um, we thought, wow, this is great. Uh, the Lord started to bless. He started to bring people into our church. We didn't even have to go out and look for people. He started to bring people into our church just off the street. People he had impressed in their hearts that they need to see, search for God's word. Maybe they had an interaction with an Adventist many years ago. Um, and suddenly they felt a need in their heart. And the Lord started bringing them into our church. Um, we started to grow. Um, three years later, last year, um, uh, we had AOI. Uh, in that process, our church also started the youth conference. Um, we've also started a four-month Bible school, a bit like uh, PAFCO, um, and, and we run that as well. Uh, and currently, we have about um, eight to ten Bible workers in our church. Um, we have four campus ministries in our church um, that we're trying to, that we're, uh, that we're, that we're running. Um, but we thought we were doing pretty well. We thought we were studying the Word of God. We thought we were, we thought we were having prayer meeting. But then last year in AOI, um, you know, some of the team came. And uh, you guys taught us united prayer. And, you know, we never experienced that before. And so right after that, we started to pray uh, in the morning and in the evenings. Um, just like how you guys are doing. And so every morning at 6 a.m., a group of us come online and we pray. And then at 8.30 in the evening before we finish the day, a group of us come on to pray. Um, and the Lord really transformed our idea of what prayer should be. We thought we were doing pretty well doing once a week Tuesday night prayer meeting. Um, but the Lord has, has shown us that we need to continue to grow in our prayer lives. Amen. And from there, the Lord has shown us that um, it has, brought, has grown our church. Um, we've grew from 30 people now and uh, we've... Uh, at the end of last year, we had an average of about 100 to 120 people. And the Lord has impressed our heart that we need to go beyond just praying 
studying the Bible um, and meeting together at church. Our church is full to capacity. It's not as big as your church. Um, and we've decided this year that we're going to do a church plant. Um, so in August of this year, we're going to split our church um, and, uh, and we're going to do another church plant. Um, but all of this really has come about through a deep desire to study God's word and a deep desire to pray. Um, the other thing that we did to prioritize uh, the, uh, the, the, the study of God's word is we decided that we would stop singing other songs, um, secular Christian songs, and we started to sing scripture songs, only hymns for divine service, and every other time that we meet together, we sing scripture songs and we just keep adding to that um, because we want to prioritize the word of God. In our mind, that's what it means to focus on the Word of God. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not, I'm not saying it's, it's uh, the best way. Um, but I'm just sharing with you a testimony, right? We need to prioritize the Word of God every time we meet. We need to prioritize prayer time every time we meet. Everything else, secondary. If I don't have enough time to do a special music, so be it. If I don't have enough time to practice choir, so be it. But study of God's Word has to be first. And prayer time has to be next. That's what has transformed our church, and uh, I'm going to share a little bit more about that tomorrow with you guys. But um, in closing, what else do we need to pray for? Luke 11 verse 13 tells us we need to pray for the Holy Spirit persistently. Uh, Luke 18 verse 1 to 9 tells us we need to be persistent in our prayer life. We need to continue every day it's not about how great your prayer life is once a year or once a week. It's about how great your, uh, how much you desire to pray. Every time the devil knocks you down and says you're not worth it, uh, you should run away, walk away from the Lord, you run to prayer, right? We need to make going to the Word of God and going to prayer the habit of our lives, amen? James 5 verse 17 to 8, James chapter 5 verse 17 to 18 tells us to pray for miracles. Pray. Push the boundaries. Every year um, our leadership comes together for, for our church board, we ask ourselves, what can we do this year that we don't have the resources or the money to do? Why? Because when we start doing things, we don't have the money to do a church plan. We have no money. We don't have enough money to have eight to ten Bible workers in our church to pay them. But we did it anyway, and then we prayed. And the Lord provided all the funds. Um, you know, we don't have all of our funds yet for our church plan. We start a renovation. We start, we've found a place. We've signed the agreement. And now we start to pray like crazy. Because we put our foot into the Red Sea. And we know that we have to pray for it to part. Right? And so we need to keep praying for miracles and act upon it. Faith without works is dead. Amen? And so you need to look for projects. You might, you might fill this hall here with 2,000 people, but pray for 4,000 people. Pray for two churches the same size as this. Pray for three churches the same size as this. Step out in faith, find the land, and then pray like crazy, right? You, can't, you shouldn't just pray for things that you can do by yourself. That's not faith. That's not faith-growing prayer. Faith-growing prayer is about doing something and praying for it because the Lord has put that in your heart and you want to do it because you know that you have no capability to do it. And the only way that you will ever get it done is to pray. So miracle, miracle believing prayers or pray for miracles in your lives. I've shared with you the testimony and I want to just do an appeal this evening. Five things I want to ask of you this evening. Commit to intense study of the word. Can you do that? Have a desire, make a commitment this evening that if you haven't been studying the Word of God because it's boring to you or you're too busy, prioritize that every morning. Reading the Word of God is like eating bread. If you missed breakfast, you better eat lunch. If you miss lunch, you better eat somewhere before, you probably will eat somewhere before dinner. If you think of e taking the Word of God like you're eating your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, if you miss morning devotion, do it mid-morning. Do it at lunchtime. If you miss morning and lunch, do it mid-afternoon. And for sure, don't go to bed without doing it in the evening. Amen? 
Likewise for your prayer life. It has to become the habit of our lives. And so commit to intense study of the Word. Go back to the basics. Think about your life and how busy it is and all the things that you have cluttered it with. And they may be great things. You may be winning souls for the Lord day and night. You might be working 24 by 7 out there knocking on doors. But that's a bad thing if you don't have time to study the Word of God and pray. So think about the areas of your life that you want to simplify. Pray like your life dependent on it because it does. Pray like you need to breathe. Pray without ceasing. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Last but not least, make a commitment to come for midweek prayer meeting. Make a commitment to come every week for midweek prayer meeting. You know, my brother likes to say, the health of the church is not how many turn up on Sabbath morning. The health of the church is how many turn up for prayer meeting in the middle of the week. And I can tell you, brothers and sisters, across all the churches that I visit, I can tell you right now, we are sick. We are suffocating. We are choking to death. We may look great on Sabbath morning because it's full to capacity, but midweek is where we know how sick we are as a church. And so I want to ask you, I want to plead with you, come for midweek prayer meeting because that's when you will truly grow. Anybody can come for Sabbath morning. Every, anybody can come for divine service, but not everyone comes for midweek prayer meeting. So those are my appeals to you this evening. And if, it's that, if that is your desire, I ask that you please stand with me as we close in prayer. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive us, for we have been caught up in the busyness of life. Many of us are doing what we think is great work for you, but we're doing it without prayer and a foundation of your word. Father, we're starving. We're a valley of dry bones. Father, we're dying inside, many of us. Lord, I pray that you please, as my brothers and sisters have stood for you this evening, have made that commitment to simplify their lives and to have an intense desire to study your word, may you guide them. May you fill them with your spirit. May you show them how they can go about doing that. And many have made the commitment that they're going to pray without ceasing, to pray as if their life depended on it, and they're going to show that by coming for midweek prayer meeting. Father, I pray that you would please fill them with your spirit and show them, give them the strength, remind them every week when it comes time for prayer meeting to come. Thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy and for extending our probation this day. Thank you, Father, that you give us another chance to be able to know you and to embrace you in our lives. And I pray that you please prepare each one of us for the second coming of Jesus Christ. For this is our desire that Jesus would come soon. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So now we will have our time for our personal prayer report. We will have a, uh, a time for a song and then you will be given time to pray individually, to consecrate yourself to Christ, to commit yourself personally to the Lord and then we will have a concluding prayer by Mom Cheryl and then it is the end of the prayer report. Shall we kneel for prayer? Nearer my God to Thee, nearer to that 
Gracious Father in heaven, we praise you for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace that you have extended to us up to this point. We thank you, dear Father, for reminding us of our great need to study your word and our great need to fervently and persistently pray for the Holy Spirit and for the revival of this church. Father, you have heard our cries. You have heard our renewed commitment to you. May you please seal it once more. Empower us, dear Father, and may you shake us, dear Father. Help us to be to, to be never be the same again, dear Lord, for your name's sake. Help us, dear Father, to rally together so that your coming will be hastened. May you increase the thirst and the longing in our hearts to get to know you more, to see you soon, dear Father. And we praise you for the promise, dear Lord, that you will be with us, that you, our prayers have been heard and answered because we ask this in Jesus' name.